Hey, good morning. I um, am focusing you down there so that you can see what I'm going to be doing. My plan is, um, well, I just saw this painting that I had done of my eye, and I thought what I would do is um, maybe paint the other eye or do something more to this. So. And I wanted to do something, and you know, I was reading somewhere yesterday, your soul puts things in your way, and when I came down the stairs I saw this single eye, and then my watercolour brushes were sitting by the sink, and I'd been lamenting not doing anything in watercolour for a while. Um, lamenting because actually the annual watercolour exhibition, which is on at the beautiful RSA gallery, um, is coming up and so far as far as I can see I've not got anything that I would use for it that I would put in so I'm just mixing some colour here now for I'm using the alizarin crimson that one there and some sap green because and I've put a touch of ultramarine blue in as well so what I'm making is a colour to describe the shadow it's here because I don't know where I painted this eye but at the moment there's more of a shadow falling on this side here so I'm going to paint that in mm. okay. and I might lift out a little bit too noticing things that are needing a little bit of adjustment so maybe your eyebrows slanting down a little more here just using a well that brush is better than I thought actually I thought it was a damp brush but it's, it was dripping wet anyway just to lift off a bit of skin there to allow the eyebrow to slant a bit more fully down the way um, maybe even shading a little bit off that area there too to make less skin between the eyebrow and the eye I chose not to put on the microphone because I thought that you would hear me because the, my, the um, iPad is so close to me here I thought you would hear me anyway you know so hopefully you will I don't know which side the mic is on so this shadow too on this side here now, which I've used a little bit more alizarin crimson there to describe that shadow. It's all quite dark you see on this side. Um, and I suppose it mightn't do any harm now to make a start on the other eye. Even just deciding where the eyebrow might be located when it runs along the same line as the upper as the upper lid does there. And I put a touch of ultramarine blue and some ultramarine blue and some Van Dyke brown together there. It'll give me a dark enough colour. Maybe first I could use it on this eyebrow. Which really could be closer I think to my eye. I'll maybe just leave it like that for now. Mm. You know, I think I will drop it down. Maybe it's about there. And there's an equally dark shadow in there that I can use the same colour for it and you know it's a bit runny so it's taking the colour with it and I wanted to warm it up a touch as well so I'm mixing some cadmium red which is that one there with the alizarin crimson and I think I'll put a touch of that in up here so that it changes the colour it's not runny enough now Yeah, I thought I'd put a touch in there. 
can just drive it, <coughs> dr draw its way down unless we can get a bit more depth to the red in there. Okay, and that of course is just um, the nose shadow along the side of the nose there, which I don't want to have that much redness to it. So I'll put a touch of green in there. All right. So now over here to the other side of the eyebrow can be a bit darker, I think, and a bit lower. Mm. Okay. And I guess we'll have to continue moving that down another little bit again. I was just thinking Damien Callan has got her classes on Wednesday night and there'll be a model sitting there this evening. So now that I'm breaking out the watercolours, it might be a nice thing to continue into the evening. Keep on and see. And Erin's driving as well now, so she can she can be maybe cajoled into taking Lily to football. We'll see. still quite dark, the top of the iris there. That's alright. And that'll be a bit whiter. Okay, so moving across now to the other, the other eyebrow. Almost like a bit of an arc up to it. And then it carries on, carries on, and goes down. I'm leaning back a little bit to be sure that it's not too wide away. I'm going to clean the palette out now because it starts to get a bit muddy, you know. I'll clean it out and start again with some colours to describe the skin between the eyebrow and the eye over here, which has almost like a burnt sienna feel to it, I think, that colour. So we could start with something. As bright as that cadmium orange and alizarin crimson. And of course the eyebrow colour ran into it there, so it made it dull anyway. Okay, and I think it'll come down to about there. I'm making some dark eyebrow again. Might go somewhere about there. And then a touch dark. Not the same now. <coughs> okay, and then there's the um a little bit of a curve there with the wrinkle a shadow underneath the eye, which continues its arc up around this shape here, so maybe it goes a bit lower than that. And it'll be a shadow that's there too. And there's that colour over here as well. And the bit that's gradually becoming lighter. Alizarin crimson there too. And pushing and lifting is quite a nice way to apply the watercolour because it's quite an enjoyable thing to watch what it does on its own. What it does on its own, you know, the pigment in the water without being pushed. Hmm. Nice there, visualizing that being pushed. <laughs> Feel that that kind of relentless inside voice that's like, not enough, Janet. Do more, be more. That's what kind of a pushing voice. 
or at least the response if it's listened to is to push so that is a kind of a relief here to recognize this value in the floor that's surprise that's where surprise resides that's what I would say Now that's Viridian Green that I'm putting in there. And if you were to ask me why I'm doing that, I don't know, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I want to put a Cerulean Blue in here too. Alright, so let's go back over to this other eye. And the upper lid of that other eye kind of sits flush with the eyebrow on that side too. It's very clear, dark on the eyelid there. The light coming in from the window is quite appealing to paint. Do you know I've got no in-between brushes now, so it's this one or nothing, which is probably an old arm. <coughs> this is one of my own um, brushes from the Rosemary & Co set. Sorry, you're dropping down there a bit. I'm missing the eyebrow. You know, I'm gonna need to tape up the the thing. I need to tape up the holder again a little bit. To keep it from dropping completely. Just reinforcing. So I was talking about, yeah, so let's get on with that other eye. Ruby and green and alizarin crimson together make a nice dark, which I think I'll use for the, really to, to re-establish the eyebrow here. I pressed it to get more pigment out there. And also to clarify the position of the upper eyelid. There, I think. And something like there. Only it'll not come to a drip at the corner. I want a real point at the end there. And um, a little bit of warmth into it now. And some cadmium red I put in there. And that's going to run about here. I'm not sure if it's the inside or outside line I'm looking at. I think it's the inside one. Okay. So just placing the position of things there. And then there's the um, shadow, which I think will be re-established. Leaning back. Let's check them out. I'll go back and do some more general marks again, I think. Just to avoid getting stuck or bogged down in any way, you know. It's quite dark in there. A bit of warmth. <clears throat> I might go down to the bottom of the nose as well, sure. Funny how sometimes a slight impatience comes on me and I just want to go back into the complacent T 
be in school and it's going to be like that to both really because in my experience the place of greatest f fulfillment in my life is being attentive and responding and that's what painting is for me unless I make it a, a means to an end so that's a little reminder to myself to come back here again now It's the only place too that um, fresh marks are possible. I need to keep leaning back to ensure that I'm not going in a different direction altogether than what I think I'm going. Oh, you know, that thing, things make sense. Like, I need to lean back to ensure that everything's making sense in its position. And even in the tones and stuff as well, like... Kind of a purple quality, I think, to the white of the eye here. I thought there was a bit of warmth needed there. I mean, it's the light. It's where the light is coming in, so I'm not wanting to put too much colour there, really. Just indications of warmth help, I think, to describe light in the skin. Unless another colour bleeds into it like that, but actually it's all right there. There's a touch of a shadow there, anyway. So the newsletter is due today. I wrote something last night that would do. A few a few changes to make, but it would do, so I can feel like I don't have a big burden about it or something. Right, so this iris could be carved into a little bit more, and I, I think I'll give it some more colour to to marry it up with that eye once it's dry enough to take the colour. And just now, just creating the shape. Oh, that slant there. <coughs> And I think I'll drop down to do something in the nose. So it's again a mixture of the viridian green and the alizarin crimson I've used to describe my beauty. Well, something dark here on the way to the nose. And here too, maybe. And even the corner, again, of the eyebrow. Maybe a little lift there. Or 
soft there. And then a general area of grayish hair there. There'll be more done in there too, I think. More to do there. And then for the one with the end of the nose, it tends to be a bit warmer generally, back of the nose. I suppose I may as well continue the trip down there and do my mouth as well. Why not? Why not? And the eyebrow is a little bit in the way, but not really. I can manage. I think I could do it a bit more tone. For the third trim there, maybe a touch darker. I don't like to mess around too much with the nose really because it feels like to me you can get away with it without having to do too much detail. The greatest shape between what I see is the nostril and that shadow. Well, I don't know if it's the nostril actually, but I just feel I want to lift off a little bit here. So I'm a bit wet there for doing the nostril, but I know at least that I can find the position of it. I think the location of the nose is okay. Needs a bit more shadow across there though. I'll get some lemon grass called for there. Point over to the reservoir first, then. I didn't actually. Point over to the reservoir, 
thinking I just want to I went a different route I took the dog to the groomer and as I was driving through the f fabulous um, trees there's incredible trees here in the autumn they're just so beautifully bronze and like the leaves are still on the trees so they're, there's like golden avenues of trees as you drive along and I found a different route to the reservoir from the dog groomers and I thought I'll just go even if I just have a paddle I was kind of having a little bit of a hard time in me you know you know the way in yourself you can kind of go through um, I knew there was something kind of playing in me or something so I was needing to somehow feel into it not even know what it was actually but just I could feel it in my body the discomfort of something so anyway I thought look because I was feeling a little bit fragile I suppose and I thought to myself look I'm even just enjoying this drive as a slow drive like through the as I say the golden avenues of trees very nice good for the heart I reckon and um, so then but I did find myself travelling towards the reservoir and I thought look I'll maybe just have a little paddle up to my ankles because I heard from somebody last week who did a course on Wim Hof that apparently there's something about uh, if you go in up to your ankles or above your collarbone there are the two places that are maybe activated by the cold water in a positive way and so I thought sure I could just have a paddle and not bother with the rest of me but when I got there the water for the first time in a long time was really like glass with light shining on it and it was very welcoming altogether. so after a walk kind of an aimless walk through the woods I eventually just uh, went back to my usual spot and before I knew what I was doing I had um, taken everything you know, I'd taken off my clothes and I was on my way in so and that was good I find that straight away when I get into the water there's a kind of um, clarity of intent so if there is something I'm struggling with I can speak it out and um, it feels like it's uh, it's maybe accepted fully in that space or something no matter what you know Whatever the struggle is, it feels like there's a holding of it. Anyway, so that was a nice beginning to the day. And then I went and had a chai latte in the storehouse in Pennycook, beside the fire, which is another lovely thing. And I met a friend of mine who's, um, she's an artist in residence in Pennycook. I just discovered, which is exciting, so I'll hopefully see a bit more of her. And she does some cold water swimming too, so I might link up. But she made me consider the whole residency thing. Because I feel like, you know, while I love teaching, it feels like the teaching is more the first thing. And this my own painting has become a bit of a second thing. It's always, I've always almost needed something like teaching in order to get me to paint in a way. Uh, that's my, that's at least the story I tell myself but maybe if I didn't have anything if I did have a residency or something maybe that would um, be kind of impetus enough to give myself to making new art of some kind but I've never I've never applied for residency anyway you know, the way my life is, I suppose I couldn't really go to live anywhere, but I could do a residency like she is in Pennycook and still go home. You know, I could have my local one. So we'll see. I'm kind of liking the brightness of the eye there, and I can, I feel that there's some of that in this eye too that I need to find. It might turn you off then because, you know, it's been a long time that you've been with me here, isn't it? And I could also always um, 
if I do carry on with the mouth and everything. I could always begin another video and make a step two. Silly. Hey, thanks for listening. It, it feels like that softness has come into my belly again. <laughs> Just through being able to speak out stuff. Because, you know, of course, there's the... I was going to say there's a financial pressure, but I've, ne I've never felt... Um, you know, there's always been enough. So there'll be kind of highs and lows and then kind of surprised sometimes at the health of the bank balance. And then as soon as I, <laughs> I suppose it's the whole being surprised at it that causes it to drop again, maybe. I don't know. But then there's a, co a whole ebb and flow in that area, which has always been the case in, in, the, in my experience. And so I guess I could begin to trust that uh, I think I have trusted more and more fully each time it feels like it's getting a bit dry. Um, well, one good thing about it is that it makes me go into the present moment more fully because otherwise I spin out in a panic about stuff. And it's... And that's futile for any sort of creative action or anything that's spinning out the quality. So and I just know I have to just be here in the moment and do the thing that makes me feel alive. And like Eckhart Tolle says, what in this moment is lacking? And you know, when I ask myself that question, like, for example, right now, sitting here, chatting with you, looking at the light in my eye and trying to find a way to describe it. And, um, you know, surrounded by comfortable surroundings. Like the couches are really comfy here and I like changing blankets on them every day. And the flowers and, you know, comfortable clothes. I've got enough food and water. Anyway, in this in this very moment, in this particular moment, there is nothing lacking. And that's a good place to be. To recognise. Kind of recognise that always it's there really. I suppose I could put a little bit more um, colour in that eye, but at the moment I want to just leave it alone. Mm. Except to move the pupil a touch. Alright, and now that I've put some um, more darks and lights, more colour up there, it seems as though I can bring some colour now again into the nose. So with the ultramarine blue and whatever mod was on the palette I'm making a dark colour here to describe where the nose stops and the cheek beyond it begins and I want to locate it clearly with the shadow above it as well you know to be sure that this isn't too far to the right or to the left You know, aren't human faces the most fascinating of things? And the thing about it being alive and constantly in flux, really, our bodies, we know that every cell is constantly in flux, really. So looking at and translating a, an eye or whatever it is, you know we're kind of maybe tuning into that aliveness, like somehow, somehow gaining access to what's under the surface of what we see what makes the surface of what we see really the aliveness that's available there <coughs> and it's not particular to human faces I suppose but it seems to me um, most clearly accessible there 
and all the tiny little changes that can then make a, a different painting. I don't know how many times I've painted this face like all through my life and the these eyes separately. One single eye one day and then another day I'm not painting. And you know I find myself looking back at myself. It's a funny thing about gaze, you know, that um, we are fairly full of mystery, really, aren't we? I don't know where it's coming from, all of this. I suppose there's a particular, like my friend who's a poet, I was saying to him the other day, I said, you know, this, it's your medicine first. The things that he writes are very beautiful. And, um, you know, provoke real response in, in me. And, and I know it does in himself as well and did when he wrote them. Like a, a physical felt sense of grief, maybe sometimes, or that kind of poignant, beautiful, aloneness kind of, <laughs> or something and it just feels like um, as I say that, it feels like that's medicine for the one first who it's first presented to him in here, this is first this is first um, being revealed to myself like Makes me feel at home in my belly. And that's even with the sadness that's kind of palpable too. Maybe even because of that, there's a feeling of homecoming because it's an arena where sadness can be um, allowed fully and become something of beauty in a way. I don't. Uh, or just to be made into. And it's not only sadness, it's all kind of. I suppose there's feelings of like. A life underneath the skin. So much of it forgotten as well, like, that I think the body remembers, doesn't it? I reckon our bodies remember. And so this feels like a sacred act sometimes to spend time really observing. the little portal in the room. I remember at a time, which maybe when I was 23 or so, I remember being in America and feeling particularly, <laughs> I have had fun in my life as well, not just to say, <laughs> but you know, feeling a particular depth of sadness and grief one night in the middle of the night I remember waking up and just being and I started to draw myself and it contained quite a lot of these the the red and it was a realistic painting and everything but it just reminded me of that night there with these these marks here and there I wonder where that painting has gone I don't so much have such a deep connection to my paintings after they're done. Maybe the connection is a video or something, you know, that I can revisit it like that if I want to. 
there is more the the root to finding it that seems to be the the gift. And it seems like as soon as as soon as I begin to have a destination for the thing, it takes on a different thing altogether. It loses. It seems that if that destination becomes an important part of it, that then some of the potency of the process is lost then. So it's nice to have that reminder and Maybe that's just a story I tell myself. I don't know if it's really... It doesn't have to be true, does it? I reckon it finds its own destination once it's actually honestly approached and made whatever it is we're making. But then it'll have its own then. You know, once there's integrity in the process of making it. That sounds very purist, doesn't it? I suppose I just mean real, you know, once, once it's a desire to find out what's true by looking, being attentive. That's enough. Sometimes I feel like sweeping up this one with Indian in my arms and saying it's okay. <laughs> I don't mean that in a belittling kind of a way. There is um oh somehow I felt that was a bit that didn't feel very good me saying that, I don't know why. It's not like a trite thing, it's appropriate grief I reckon. And it's not something that can be sticking plastered away. I suppose us living here now in this world nowadays have a level of, you know, we have access to a level of grief that's um, fitting for our time. And that's okay. How do I make that eye very bright there? Yeah, maybe a lemon yellow. And in case it blends in, good in the dark. And just so that you know that if I do a second part to this, and I probably will. I think I'll put on the microphone because I'm aware that I'm talking fairly low. And so you mightn't have got all that I've said there. So sorry about that. These four things are bothering me a bit. The four touches of Viridian Green. I think three touches is all that's needed there.
as I'm um, touching it up there, I was thinking to myself that I'll probably end up doing an, an online course in watercolour portraiture for after Christmas first for people who've never before attended a course. And then um, I'll do one for folk who have been on courses before with me. So just so you know. Um, I'll put those in the, in the email newsletter. Okay. Are my roses gorgeous? You know what? They, I got them from Lidl. And they've actually lasted for a long time. I've never painted them, but I did do this last night. <laughs> just because they made me feel like that. I stuck on some collage leaves and stuff, but they're not actually... I thought I might end up using it for collage or something, maybe. A pink. Okay, thank you for tuning in and for staying with me. If you have stayed with me all this time, I think it's nearly 50 minutes. Um, it's been a real pleasure and you know it always is to feel I'm speaking with you wherever and whatever you're at um, and there's midnight waiting to get in and maybe have a cup of tea and if I do any more to this painting I'll show it to you um, in another video so here, here it is for now I think you can see it on the screen there my shaky hand Okay, thanks for tuning in guys. See you soon. Bye.